Hi, Hi. Lily. <laughs> what a joy. So to nice meet you. to meet you. Thank you so much for having me. Are you excited to see your brand? I'm nervous and excited. <laughs> Ready to hear what you have to say. I remember the first time I saw my brand. Mm -hmm. I was like, Ooh, do I have the brand of a murderer? <laughs> I hope not. But it wasn't. Okay, good. Yeah. But it wasn't healthy. And now it is. Mm -hmm. So that's our goal. That's our goal. I read your history. Mm -hmm. I looked at your scans. I'm going to show them to you. Mm -hmm. I have a good idea what's going on. Okay. But I want to hear from you. What's your goal? I would say my goal has always consistently been to, to be happy, to find happiness, to find fulfillment within myself without looking for outside resources to, to, to make me happy. So um, whether that's through my spirituality that I've, that I've developed over the last couple of years or whatever the case may be, it's been um, a struggle to maintain a consistent stream of joy. Joy, I, I have a, lot, a lack of joy in my life and, and unfortunately a lot of anxiety and recently questioning whether I have ADD. Um, I grew up feeling I had OCD, very strange, particular weird habits that I would do. Um, kind of have outgrown that as an adult, but um, still feel it lingering there a little bit. Um, and then I also have chronic fatigue. Which yeah, is a, I don't like that. Yeah, me either. It's we we really need difficult. to like hunt that down. Yeah. Because chronic fatigue says what it is, but it doesn't say why it is. Right, yeah. And if you don't know the why, you can't really treat people. Right, yeah. Has anybody checked you for infections? <laughs> no. Yeah. Chronic fatigue, you got to go why. Yeah. Is it, is it something else? Mm. Maybe. Yeah. So we're going to end up checking you for infections like Lyme and um, Epstein Barr and mold. Mm -hmm. and I, I think that's just critical. Yeah. And a lot of people, they go, well, I'm sad. Right. It's like, well, why are you sad? Right, right. Right? right. Yeah. If there's good things in your life, mm -hmm. and, you know, we're like not in the middle of a war. Right. It's like, well, why are you sad? Right, right. And if you're just sad, it means your brain is not firing right. Yeah. And I definitely feel that. I feel that even when I have a lot of things in place, my career, I have own a home, I have a great family, I have wonderful friends. Why is there it's even something's worse. not clicking? Yeah. Right. It's even worse because yeah. you think you should feel right. good. Mm -hmm. But when you don't feel good, then you can attack yourself. Yeah. If it's a sense of guilt. Like, right. Or shame. Why do I feel this way? I should, shouldn't feel this yeah. way. Yeah. Tell, tell me about the body dysmorphia. And when did that start? I had it when I, it kind of developed in eighth grade when my, so I was 12, 13, and my skin was really bad. So I started to deal with it, not about my body, but very much focused on my skin. Um, I couldn't, I was doing my makeup in the dark. Like I didn't want to wake up and turn on the fluorescent lights in my bathroom and stare at my acne. So I would do it in very dim lighting. I, I would not want to look at myself, but then also was obsessively looking at myself to try and see how I looked at different angles, to look at the acne at different angles. And it's kind of like a, I hate looking in the mirror, but I have to obsessive sort of component there. And, and when I do break out, I still have the same thing where I'm very, or if something's wrong, if I have swelling somewhere, or if I have a breakout or something's, something's wrong, uh, cosmetically, um, I'm very attached to it, obsessed with it, have to look at it all the time. And now in my, as a 25 year old dealing with this weight gain, the last mostly like nine months of my life, obsessively looking in the mirror at my body. Um, yeah, just, just kind of looking at, I'm also exposed to, I'm constantly exposed to pictures of myself all the time on social media, you know, on my show, pictures of me f on my show, which started when I was 19. 
So I'm sort of constantly comparing what I looked like, what I look like now to what I looked like when I was 19, a child. So, you know, thinking my body doesn't look like that anymore. Well, right, because I was literally a child, <laughs> which I still think I am a child. But, um, well, to me, you are. So. Well, <laughs> to me, I am as well. But, um, but so not, it's not a child, but a, not a, child. a young woman. I'm young, sure. young, yeah, yeah. But so I'm <laughs> comparing my body to my own body, basically, and and afraid of the changes that have been happening and seeing certain things and going, well, that wasn't there when I was however old. And I'm seeing pictures of what I looked like three years ago and, oh, I don't look like that anymore. And that's a problem. So to me, it's sort of been like a t an attack and a battle on myself. It's me versus me, me from a couple of years ago versus me now and, and thinking, how do I get back to that? How can I look like that again? And and to be honest, it, was, it has been really hard the last couple of months, specifically dealing with more noticeable weight gain than I ever have in my life, while also being on film while it was happening. So shooting my show and having that weight gain basically documented on camera episode by episode, week by week of my life, my weight fluctuation. And so it felt very much like this massive problem, this thing that was taking up truly 90% of my brain capacity. I was barely thinking about anything else. It was every thought was about my weight, was about what I was eating, how I could lose weight, how I don't look like I used to look, how everyone looks around me, how I don't look like them. All of my thoughts were about my body. And it was very overwhelming and, and a very negative headspace that I was in. And I've luckily gotten past that and I'm coming out of it, still dealing with it, but coming out of that very, it was a spiral for sure of a couple months. But my point was that in being in film while that was happening, it was very it's very difficult because it was like one of the hardest little chapters of my life that was not that I wasn't able to experience in private. So it was just a very vulnerable, vulnerable thing to go through something so personal in a very public way. Yeah. It was really hard. I bet. Yeah. I'm so sorry. What are you thinking right now? That I try to be a strong role model for a lot of people. Um, it's hard when, you know, I, I very much try to preach the idea of loving yourself and accepting yourself and you don't have to fit a one size fits all sort of image in your life, especially as an actor. Like, it's okay that I don't look like all these other people and then on the inside feeling like I do need to look like those people. So it's a bit of a hypocrisy feeling, um, feeling sometimes like, um, a fraud or that I'm lying to myself or lying to my fans who look up to me because I am trying to promote these body positive messages, but I'm also still learning them myself. So, you know, it's And you share. Right. Your and, I'm, and I think right? I'm not just because I'm talking about like I don't want there to be a one size fits all for humans and that we should be able to happily accept people who look different that I'm not still struggling with that concept. I want it to happen and I want to fully believe it, but I'm also still on a daily basis 
struggling with it. So it's not something that I've mastered and I don't wake up every day feeling like, oh, it's okay that I don't look like that. There are very brief moments where I feel that. And when I do feel that, I feel empowered to talk about them and be vocal about them. But the other 90% of the time, it's the struggling part. All right, let's look at your scans. Okay. So we do a study called SPEC. And SPEC looks at blood flow and activity. It looks at how your brain works. Mm -hmm. And it basically shows us three things. Good activity, you have a lot. Mm -hmm. Too little or too much. Mm -hmm. And then my job, our job, is to balance it. If you have parts that work too hard, we want to calm them down. If we have parts that don't work hard enough, we want to stimulate. Right. We look at it in two ways. So you see two sets of pictures up there. Mm -hmm. The um, one on the left is our surface scan, mm -hmm. and it's looking at the outside surface should be full, even, and symmetrical. Mm -hmm. uh, your young 25-year-old brain should just be big, fat, smooth, mm -hmm. and healthy. The ones on the right, the red, white, and blue ones, blue is average activity. Red is the top 15%, white is the top 8%. And the top 8% should be in the cerebellum, um, which has half the brain's neurons. Mm. And so if we look at your skin, it's bumpy. Yeah, that doesn't look left. too good. <laughs> um, and I think you, whether it's a trampoline accident or something else that you haven't told me, I think you had a concussion. What? Because you can look and see the right side looks hurt. Yeah, I'm like, why do I have a hole? Right here. And that's why sometimes you probably have ADD because you have sleepy activity uh -huh. in the front part of your brain right here. And your temporal lobe here clearly got hurt. What? See, this one is fine. And this one, when you concentrate, it's perfectly healthy, normal. But you see how on the right side, it's, it's so, less active than it should be. Something's going wrong. So here it is. And even a minor concussion? Mm -hmm. Tell me what happened in the trampoline I <laughs> Um I, On the trampoline, I was, I basically just bounced backwards and hit the back of my head on the metal pole. And there was like a ringing in my head for a couple minutes. We went to the hospital, we got a scan. They said there was no concussion. Um, so yeah, we were, I had like a, you know, a bump swelling for, I don't remember, I was young, so I don't Like know. on the right side? I kind of but remember you, it being on the left, but who knows? If you look here, it's sort of like your temporal lobe got pinched, which means it slammed up against that front ridge and then against the back ridge. That's so crazy. And this is one of the visual perception areas in the brain. Mm. So when you look at yourself and you don't see what other people see, I need to fix this. Mm. So when you look at yourself, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, you're cute as can be. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, that's crazy. Now, if I was you, the question I would ask me, is, can you make it better? Dr. I'm like, Dr. what the hell happened? And if you do what I ask you to do, that's always, uh, it can just be normal. Wow. Do not have permanent brain damage. <laughs> okay, good. But it's one of the reasons you're not Iring. getting better, even though you've tried yeah. hard yeah. to get better for over a decade. Yeah. So, wow. So I don't want you to think of it as I'm not trying hard enough. It's, you probably didn't have the right answer. No, answers. it's nice to know. I'm very emotional this week. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it's sort of an emotional thing. It is, but like truly I've been weirdly emotional the last week. I don't know what it is. So if we look at the red, white, and blue ones. Mm -hmm. 
at rest, you have, we call it the diamond pattern. So you worry, you hold on to things. Mm -hmm. Things don't go a certain way, you get upset. Mm -hmm. You can be anxious, irritable. Very irritable. <laughs> it's the truth. Yeah. And sometimes it can come out of the blue. And yeah. And you're like, very quickly it can become what irritable. happened? Sometimes, if you really have sort of mood instability and a lot of irritability, sometimes a certain medicine will calm it down. We'll just keep that in the back of our head. Okay. Especially as I get to know you better. Um, this diamond, past trauma. So like when I like emotional trauma, yeah, it's sort of like it gets stuck in your head. Yeah. Have you ever had anyone cry this much doing this? Way more. Oh. Okay. Oh, way more. You're doing great. Okay. I want to give you a group of supplements, especially Happy Saffron. A Give your brain nutrients. These nutrients, brain and body power, it's two packets a day, fish oil, multiple vitamin, mm -hmm. brain boost. Mm -hmm. um, are you taking a probiotic? No. I'm going to give you a probiotic. Okay. And then something to actually boost testosterone. Okay, yeah. So, um, and then I want to like talk to you every week. Mm hmm. Just to like go, okay, are we going in the right direction? Right. Mm -hmm.